Hi everyone. So as you all have requested to know about programming languages and their use cases, so I have decided to um, give you an overview of like uh, 15 most popular programming languages that is used nowadays. So we will go through the 15 most popular languages and see how we can use it in our uh, different uh, purposes and all. Hi everyone, so today uh, we will uh, discuss about programming languages and their uses. So uh, I'm planning to go through uh, 15 most popular languages and their uh, various use cases where, uh, where it is used in real life uh, scenarios and how you can get started with uh, each languages or what suits you the best. Okay, So I'll be covering uh, what programming languages are there what what is each language good for and uh, which one you should learn and best languages for beginners so uh, let's get started with it so these are the programming languages i'll be covering today uh, so just to give you an uh, overview so c is like one of the oldest language and uh, it's a core programming language c sharp this is uh, developed by microsoft and primarily used by uh, microsoft uh, platforms C++ one of the highly advanced core level programming it's very good for large scale systems and uh, increasing performance and enhancements so I would say this is like a web styling mostly styling the pages and stuff um, next is HTML again uh, web web page designing um, Java uh, like mostly for uh, software development Android and all uh, I will cover all this in detail uh, so this is like mostly for server side. Next is JavaScript again used uh, primarily for web development. Then we have Objective-C. Uh, this was like the earliest version for iOS. Then later they moved to Swift. So let's say it's good for mobile development. Then we have PHP, uh, which is again good for uh, yeah then we have php which is again a, a scripting language uh, for web then we have perl this is used for gy and stuff python uh, one of the most powerful language and easy ruby we use it for uh, data analysis we have sql for dbms or database management system uh, Swift primarily used by all the Apple platforms. Golang, again, uh, this is used by Google for all of their platforms. So this is what we'll cover and let's dive deep into each of them. Let's start with the C programming language. So C has been introduced in 1972, which is like uh, 50 years ago. And it is one of the earliest programming languages to be used for developing uh, compilers, softwares and operating systems. C has a very uh, slow learning curve, so it's kind of a hard to learn, but uh, it's one of the best language to understand how compilers and ha hardware interacts each other. I have like given a small uh, syntax on the left side where you can see how uh, how to print hello world. And one of the downside of C is like it doesn't have uh, objective or in programming concepts, so you cannot modularize your programs. But uh, in my experience, C is primarily used to like enhance your performance of your software and uh, like dig deep into like uh, like into the lower level of the languages and increase the performance. So that's it. And I would suggest everyone to know uh, C because uh, it's one of the core languages you must learn, and it helps you a lot to understand how uh, how actual the interaction happens between the hardware layer and the compiler layer language is used in many cases for example uh, such as building operating system and uh, system tools uh, it's even used in game development to increase the performance so uh, likewise it's used in advanced computation and graphics building compilers and enterprise softwares so should you learn c c is in the most popular or trendy programming languages to learn However, it is still an in-demand skill with a longer history than most programming languages have. 
Learning C will give you a good overview of the evolution of programming during the past 50 years. You will find plenty of developers who used C even before the internet came to exist. Yeah, some of the downside of C is it's not a friendly, it's a low level programming language. It's not at all a beginner friendly language, but it's a core programming language and it will knowing it will make you a better engineer when you understand how the hardware and the compiler interaction happens. I will be linking some uh, learning contents in the description. You can check it out. And if you're interested, you can learn from that for free. Now let's talk about C Sharp. Originally developed by Microsoft to run on their .NET framework, C Sharp is based on C and C++. C Sharp was originally designed to be easy to learn and use. C Sharp is a high level language, meaning that it reads a bit like English. On top of that, it abstracts away a lot of those complex tasks needed to make sure the computer can read and process your code. However, C Sharp is not a high level as Python. For example, Python is even easier for beginners than C Sharp. And to be frank, I'm a fan of Python. Now let's talk about the use cases. So C Sharp is used uh, for game development as uh, in the Unity, uh, desktop applications for the Windows operating system, it's also used in web services and web application and majority of the Microsoft's tools and products are developed developed in C sharp. If you have attended any Microsoft workshop or um, webinars, you can see they use the C sharp for showcasing all of their development process. So the big question is, should you learn C sharp? C sharp is the main programming language for developing software and programs for Microsoft. So if you are interested in working with Microsoft or building applications for the Microsoft platform, C Sharp is the perfect choice for you. Go and get started with a project for, uh, with C Sharp then. And another popular application for C Sharp is game development. If you want to work in the gaming industry, C Sharp is an excellent choice. It is the uh, recommended programming language for building games on Unity game engine. So you can consider it if this is your cup of tea. I will also link some uh, courses and platforms where you can learn this programming language under the description. Next, let's talk about C++. C++ is based on C, the indisputable denouser of programming language still in use. C++ is a powerful, high performance language, but it's rather lower level. Low level programming languages use a lower degree of abstraction. So they are more difficult to read than high level languages. Learning a low level language means you will spend more on understanding how the language work, language works, works than the uh, programming logic itself. Therefore, you can dedicate less time to learning how computer programming works and what it's all about. If you're coding an application from scratch with C++, you need to write a lot of code. That said, C++ projects are often more difficult to maintain and manage. On the other hand, C++ is very scalable and efficient. Heaps of resource intensive programs often use C++, like some of the most stunning 3D games out there. C++ is one of the core languages and it uh, helps improving your performance significantly. And this is also helps to scale your uh, application or your software in a very large manner. Some downsides are like, again, uh, it has a slow learning curve. Mm, this, this is not uh, beginner friendly, but I would recommend everyone to learn this because it helps you understand. So I would uh, recommend everyone to learn this programming language because it helps you understand the core concepts and uh, best practices of programming. The several use cases of uh, C++ are it's used in desktop applications, softwares, uh, mobile apps. Wait, I thought mobile apps were developed in uh, Android or Java, right? But in fact, in Java too, like some underlying uh, wrappers are uh, written in C++. Uh, for Android development or even in iOS developments to improve the performance, okay? And also if there are like a server side scripting uh, for those application, they also use C++ to improve their performance. It's again used in games and game engines. 
again the main reason would be to boost the performance c++ is also used to write advanced programs and algorithms it's always the same reason it helps to improve performance so the question is should you learn c++ if you're interested in c learning c++ remember that it's it's complex to learn so try to find an experienced mentor to guide and support you along the way if you want to take on big projects and have a lot of control of how the programs execute c++ is the most likely a good choice learn the basics of c learning the basics of c helps you to pick up c++ faster that's somewhat of a prerequisite of learning c++ anyways once you master C++, learning other programming languages will be much easier. Again, I will be linking some of the courses and uh, tutorials you can follow to learn C++. Next, let's talk about CSS or Cascading Style Sheets. CSS is the language for web designers and web developers used to create the look and design of a web website. Of course, CSS is just a style sheet language and not a proper programming language. But since it's used for all the front end and web designing, uh, I'm including it here. So when HTML creates structures and contents for a website like paragraphs, headings and images, CSS take those elements and make them look pretty. If you're interested in building websites, you must learn CSS at some point. Luckily, CSS is easy and quick to learn. It's also one of the most motivational language for beginners because you see the output from your code instantly. However, even though you can learn the basics of CSS in just few days, it can take years to master the more advanced tricks with confidence. Now let's say what it is used for. Styling web page structure, layout and content by selecting HTML elements and applying styling rules to them. So should you learn CSS? Of course you should learn it uh, because it will help you at some point to design your own uh, web pages and websites if you are interested into it. If you want to build websites, you must learn CSS. Together with HTML and JavaScript, CSS is one of the most fundamental front-end skills you must master as a web developer or web designer. So the pack, so it's basically a bundle package like if you HTML plus CSS plus JavaScript. So this is basically the front end language, the basic front end language, I would say. Also, if you want to make some money already while you are learning to code or in your college, the fastest and easiest way to get your first mini job is to learn HTML, CSS and JavaScript. And you can start earning money in the matter of weeks with small freelance works in freelancing websites. At, at the same time, you can gradually build yourself a nice web developer portfolio to get bigger jobs step by step. So, guys, you can start with a small project with a very good uh, web designing, use CSS, HTML and JavaScript, maybe build your own portfolio in that or go to some freelancing websites and uh, like bid for some project and start exploring your skills on that. Next, let's talk about HTML. It stands for Hypertext Markup Language, and it is used to create structured content for all websites on the World Wide Web. Instead of a programming language, it's a markup language. So it is used to create structures and contents for the web pages. You can use HTML to create content on web such as navigation menus, sidebars, uh, foot areas, headings, paragraphs, list, embedded images and other media. So basically whatever uh, contents you see in any uh, websites, so it's made with uh, HTML, okay? Uh, like I said in the previous one, HTML is always combined with the CSS and uh, JavaScript. Now, should you learn HTML? Uh, I would say yes, uh, because it helps you to build good web pages, web designs, if you are into it, it will always help you at some point of your life to create a portfolio for yourself or get a freelance job and like, or to be a friend and developer, uh, anything else. At some point you will have to touch HTML in some, at some point of your career. So maybe for a presentation of your program or anything. So a basic knowledge of HTML will always help you. Next, let's talk about Java. 
Java is one of the most popular and widely used programming languages in the world. You can use Java for a variety of different projects from coding Android smartphone apps to building complex desktop application. The fundamentals of Java derives from C++ and it is easier than C++ to learn, especially for beginners. For instance, one of the fundamental ideas of the developers of Java had was to create a programming language that would allow their code to run on two devices that were nothing alike. That's where the slogan, write once, run anywhere came. So Java is popular across all platforms, operating systems and devices. This versatile and flexibility make Java one of the most in-demand and highest paying programming languages in the world. By cross-platform, I mean like if you create a programming languages for Windows, this can be used to run in Linux, Mac OS also. So what is Java used for? So Java is primarily used for Android app development, then cross-platform desktop applications, game development, big data technologies and enterprise software developments. You can see the syntax of uh, Java on the left side. Now the question is, should you learn Java? If you're not sure yet what it is that you want to accomplish with coding, Java could be a good option thanks to its versatility. All in all, Java is a great asset to have when you start applying for your first developer job. However, you can also find other programming languages that are more beginner friendly and requires less code to create an entire app from scratch for example python or ruby java is also the most useful programming language for android mobile development so if you want to be an uh, app developer go for it java is good for that Next.